The organisers of the first ever Women's World Cup have persisted in the face of seemingly insuperable odds and by the sheer force of their determination and enthusiasm have succeeded in getting the event up and running. The opening games were played last weekend and matches have been continuing throughout the week. Paul Wade has been following events. Twelve countries as far apart as Canada and Spain, Japan and the USA gathered in South Wales for the inaugural World Cup. The orange-shirted Dutch, they took on the Soviet Union here in Flanharen, a village west of Cardiff that hosted several pool matches. In fact, it was the Dutch that were involved in the first ever fall international when they challenged the French. That was as recently as 1982. But as it is such a young sport, holding a World Cup seemed almost over-ambitious. Not at all. The demand grew out of the European Cup, which uh, was played uh, three years ago in bourg en bresse in France. And uh, it was agreed that Great Britain would host the next European Cup, by which time uh, America, Canada, New Zealand had already asked if they could come too, which would mean it wasn't technically a European Cup anymore. So we decided to invite any international standard rugby playing nation. What do you want spectators to come away from these matches saying? So many people come with uh, misconceptions, uh, what they think they're going to see, um, and I think anybody who comes along will, will have found within 10 minutes they forgot they were watching women playing rugby. Watching Holland's one-sided win, England skipper Karen Armand explained the appeal of the game for women. Rugby is a physical game, it's a game of contact, you know, and uh, I think you'll see today nobody shirks away from that at all. Most of the women's teams are in fact coached by men. We make no compromises um, in terms of, uh, of the way we play the game, in terms of, of the, the coaching uh, techniques that we use. There, there are no compromises. The game is the same in the women's game and the men's game. One or two tactical changes may be because the women, in the women's game the kicking isn't so strong. Um, we see rather fewer line-outs, I suspect, in, in the women's game as a result, and, and therefore we can, we can concentrate a little bit more on what we can do from scrummaging. Um, but, but no real differences, no concessions. In the England-Italy pool match, the kicking may not have been that strong, but as Karen Armand demonstrates, it was pretty accurate. And the place kicking of the blue-shirted Italians was bang on target. As for Carla Negri's 40-metre drop goal, well, that was as impressive as any we saw in the Five Nations Championship. Perhaps the most refreshing aspect of the women's game is the will to move the ball wide as often as possible. Mitchell to Armand to Claire Willett, Sam Robson, and finally Cheryl Stennett going clear for the first of a hat-trick of tries. Fair play, did very, very well. Very entertaining. It was, it's all running, see, they, they didn't kick anything, it was all running rugby. So, that's what you like about rugby these days, got to be running in there. Women have reached a fair level of skill in a short time, and top class players are dedicated to training. Some Americans work out as many as six days a week. It's a hard game, and uh, it's sort of a, a survival uh, of the fittest and the toughest, I think. The best thing for me is that I played basketball when I was in college and you can't foul out of rugby, so that's a good selling point for me. So you actually like going out and uh, dishing out the punishment of it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we're going to beat the hell out of somebody and enjoy it, sure. The Russians, they don't know what they're missing. Their women only took up the game last year and had to barter their way through Wales selling souvenirs to subsidize their tour. The 
game accommodates all shapes and sizes. It's growing fast, but is still a second choice sport, taken up by women much later than by men. There are many women who've, who've picked up rugby for the first time through their, um, uh, whilst at university, through clubs that have been run at university. And uh, I don't think they're any the weaker for that in, in the long term. I think taking, picking up late in life um, perhaps gives them a fresh enthusiasm for, for the game. You make such great friends. I mean, you see these people three times a week, four times a week. It's more than you see any of your other friends. You travel, you see parts of the country I'd never normally go to. I've seen parts of the world I'd never normally go to. So basically, the appeal of rugby for women is exactly the same appeal as it is for men. Yeah. Well, it's not surprising. It's the same game. And more of the same game in next week's programme when we follow England's fortunes in the final.